Good morning, Eric. First off, congratulations. Thank you very uh, much. Good morning. Good morning. Wanted to ask you a quick two-part question. Number one, what this opportunity means for you on a personal level. And also, what's the single biggest thing you want this offense to be known for? Um, to answer your first question, Alan, is, you know, individually, I think it's just, um, you know, I feel, I feel gratified that coaches put trust in me to take on a little bit more, um, that hopefully what I do day in and day out has, has been respected and seen as an addition to the staff and the organization and what we're doing. And really, that's, that's why you get in coaching, to do things like that. The second part of it is, I think we want this offense to be known as one that is successful and wins. That's At the end of the day, that's what the outcome has to be. So we want to do whatever we can to put our players in position to be successful and, and score. And that's, you know, that's general philosophy overview of it, but that's what it is. And then there's a lot of other sub subtopics in there, certainly. But as an overview, we want it to be, a, you know, we want our guys to be in a position where we're a complementary group to the defense, to special teams, and we're giving ourselves a chance to win. Thank you. Armando. Morning, Eric. Uh, congratulations, sir. Um, so if you could take us kind of behind the scenes to the making of the sausage, so to speak, how long did it take to get this offense, this playbook to be what is now the Miami Dolphins offense? Uh, how much give and take was it? And how much did you want in there that you didn't get in there? Uh, <laughs> well, well, let me let me start with the, the last question first, right? Which is everything that's in there is ours. So there's not that what did you want to get in or what you didn't get in. We all have input. We all have suggestions on things, and we all have experiences. All every one of us as coaches has brought something from a different place, and hopefully, we try to use that as a collaborative effort to bring as much as we can into this to be diverse so that all our experiences bring something to the offense. Um, so there's nothing in there that I'm uncomfortable with or that I don't like. And the things that aren't in, you know, I, it, it's not so much about plays, it's execution. We, uh, there's a lot of good plays out there and they're not very good plays if you don't execute well. So if we execute well, you can run simple plays and be really, really good at. Them. So I, I think that's, you know, I, I don't worry about plays that we don't have in. Um, as far as the playbook and, and how it's taken, it's been a it's been a long process. I don't think the playbook is done. I don't think it's ever done. We're always looking and studying. And if we can get something from somewhere else that we think is good for us, then we're going to continue to add and evolve. Now, maybe some things don't aren't as highly repped and in practice or don't have as great a frequency. But I, I, I don't ever see a playbook as a, as a done, it's a, to me, a playbook is a living document. It continues to grow and evolve based on the players you get and what they can do, because in there, we want to find out what our players do best. And then those are the plays that we want to use. And, and if I could follow up on that, because continuity was a word that Flo used um, about you guys being the co-offensive coordinators about what's going to be run. So where does continuity of what has happened in the past uh, land for, say, Tua, uh, the young offensive lineman, those guys? Yeah, well, I think continuity is going to happen. Um, we're going to develop continuity going forward. Con continuity doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to take something that we did last year and bring it forward. We're we've evaluated last year. We've looked at it, and we said these are things that we feel that our players are good at and maybe schemes that are good that we like but moving forward, we're going to develop continuity. Continuity is not something you, you bring with you in a backpack. We have to develop that. Our players have to demonstrate, you know, consistency to develop that continuity to make us say, this is what we're going to do. There are some things that are built into our offense, some terminology things, some schemes, some pass routes, and all those things that may we may have run in the past. And so if you call that continuity, then that's continuity. But we're, we're going to, again, we're going to go back and we're going to figure out what our guys do. We have to create continuity, not rest on our laurels kind of on things we did well in the past. Next, we'll go to Cam, followed by Joe. E, congrats, man. Um, good, Cam. Uh, obviously, a lot of attention on the offense will start at quarterback, you know, with, with Tua going into year two. I'm curious, with what you guys have started to put together so far, what may be – the biggest difference of what you want to do with him in this offense? 
Well, I think that that's, you know, and this may not be the answer you want, but it's, it remains to be seen because we don't, we don't know. We're, we're still teaching in the early stages of this. We haven't put pads on yet. We don't even know the playbook really well enough to do some of those things yet. We're just now getting our, our hands on our players and we're going to develop that. It's not, we can't paint a picture in the future. What would we like it to look like? I'd like, you know, I'd love to say we're going to score 70 points every game, you know, but <laughs> that's obviously that would be desirable, but I don't know that that's going to happen. So what, our goal is, is to get everything taught that we need to get taught. Runs, protections, route-wise, the scheme, the mentality of our offense, what we want. And then we'll, we'll have to perform at a certain level. High level is going to be our expectations to go forward and win. If I could follow up on uh, another person in that backfield, uh, Miles Gaskin had a really good year last year, but it seems like all offseason everybody was trying to replace him. And, it, you know, you, you, you bring him back. And what, what is it about Miles that, maybe gives you confidence that if he's the lead guy again, um, he can have the type of year and even better than he did last year? Well, I think the big thing about Miles from, from at least last year and going from year one to year two for him was his growth in football and what he learned and how dependable he became for what we needed done. And I see those same things progressing, that same continuity, if you will, the term we were using a, minute, a moment ago, of his development as to where he is. Um, he's, he's prideful, he's professional. He comes in, he gives you a day's work. He works at it. He wants to be a really good player. And I think that that gives him a chance. And we, we have to wait until we get out there and compete with everybody else and see who shakes out to be the best guy. But I always believe that Miles is gonna put his best foot forward and give you everything he has. And that's what gives him a chance. Appreciate you. We'll go to Joe, followed by Omar. Congratulations. It's good to see you. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good, man. Uh, listen, with the co-offensive coordinator designation, can you just kind of help us understand a little bit about the process that you envision during a game week? Like, for anybody who's concerned, like, well, who's working on what? Like, what do you work on? What does George work on? How do you develop the best plan for that week? And then, and then what happens on game day? Yeah, well, I think as far as game week and things like that, we haven't gotten there where we are right now. And I think it's going to be the same collaborative process is we're all involved in this. It's not exclusive, you know, Lem just does the run game or Grizz just does it. We, we all have input in this. All of our players are involved in it. The backs, for instance, are involved in the run game, protections and the pass game. The receivers are involved in the run game. So we all have input as far as what's going on. And it's, it's the entire offense is built to be a collaborative effort. It just, because all of us have to be able to speak the same language, to have the same desire and the same goal for that outcome, which is a high effective performance on each individual play. And the only way that happens is if we're all on the same page and we're all having the same conversation. So right now it's building that way. That's how we've done the playbook. That's how we started with the players right now. That's how we're practicing. We're doing things in the walkthroughs. And I don't see that changing in, in any way going forward. It's all collaborative. We're all going to have input on it. And th that's that's where I think you get good uh, good staff and good football coaches together. That's the advantage of it. You know, it's very common for quarterbacks to get new offenses on a year-to-year -year basis. Unfortunately, it's the nature of the business. There's Coaches change very frequently, whether it's in college or the pros. And one thing coach uh, quarterbacks always say to me is, oh, this book is like learning Spanish. You know, last year was French and the year before, you know, if if last year was French, is this year Spanish or is there still a lot of French? I, I think uh, it's, it's a great question. And it's interesting that you say because I tell my players all the time, really, football players should be able to speak multiple foreign languages because our brains are wired to learn language. Our language is just football. That's our language. It's not a foreign language. Now, and, they're done, and I'm not highly motivated to learn another language either, So, but I'm highly motivated to learn a different football language. But we're, we're wired to learn language, and they are different languages. But they're in this, people are in the same places for the most part. Assignments, protections, run game concepts, routes, often coverages are very, very similar from spot to spot. So it's just translating what that is and how we talk about that and what it is. But it's a... Uh, 
it, but it's communication and it's a collaborative effort that all of us are saying it and seeing it the same way. Thanks. Eric, uh, you, you, your history is as a running back coach. You've worked your way up the league as a running back coach. You've been a run game coordinator. Last year, you guys were 29th in yards per carry. Obviously, that's something that you want to improve on. What will this run game identity be and how will you guys improve on it? It's an area of focus for us. Uh, we're we're going to start at the beginning of it. We're going to have to go back and look at what things we're doing well, what we didn't do well, and what we need to adjust. Um, and what kinds of plays those are, again, I, I truly believe the execution of the plays is far more critical than what kinds of plays we're running. And so that starts with players. We have to get the right players in the right spots. And then we've got to execute the techniques that we're being taught. And we've got to tie that into our scheme. And that's a, it's, it's a very simple answer, but that's, that is the answer. We'll go to Lewis. Hey coach. So I wanted to go back to the running back specialty of yours. So we, there's obviously, there was a lot of, speculation that maybe Miami would go big on getting a high profile running back, getting a true workhorse, but it seems that you guys seem more focused on doing the running back by committee strategy. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are on the challenges of coaching, developing a committee type running back room instead of having the one guy that is just the every down back. Well, I think it's a challenge every day to coach the entire room. Uh, I coach every one of these players as though they have to be prepared to go in a game at any given point in time. That's, that's how every one of them is coached. It's not one guy that it resides on him and the other four, you know, get the week off. That's not how it is. Everyone is prepared to go in for whatever their role is and they have to be ready for it. And uh, I've had, I've had, you know, one guy that we thought was the good back and I've had that guy go down and that second guy better be ready. I played, a, I've played a fullback, you know, as a ball carrier before, because we've had injuries within the game and he has to be ready. So the running back com by committee, we're looking for guys that are going to establish a role and contribute to us and give us the best chance to win. And if that's three or four guys, then that's what it is. If that's one guy, then that's what it is. But we, we coach them all the same way and they're all pushed and they're all held accountable and responsible as though they're going to be the starter and they're going to be the bulk, you know, the, the ball carrier that's going to get the bulk of the, of the work. And that's the only way that I've ever done it. It's the only way I, I know how to do it. Last question will be Travis. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Congratulations. I haven't got a chance to wish that or say that to you yet. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, you, you add Jalen Waddle, Will Fuller, you get Albert Wilson back this year. A lot of new pieces and new skill sets to the receiver room. I'm wondering how you feel about the receiver position's ability to create and exploit matchups. Well, I hope they do that because that's good for everybody on the offense if they're able to do that. That's, I mean, that's why we've, we've got playmakers in, the, in that room. Um, I think we've got playmakers in a bunch of different rooms. I think we've got playmakers in the tight end room. I, I'm working to make sure we have playmakers in the running back room. But I think is equally as strong, we've got playmakers at the quarterback position and we've got them in the offensive line. We're going to have to create our own, our own destiny and, and our, create what we want this to look like. And the better athletes, the better football players you have, which we have increased that. I think, you know, Chris and, and Flo have done a great job bringing guys in here that they give us a chance every week. And that's what you want. 